Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Gen Bar Sports Extra. I'm Tazai Howard. We have a lot to discuss today regarding YSU sports, so let's get right into it. The Youngstown State University women's volleyball team swept Oakland University and celebrated its seniors on November 1st and 2nd inside the Beagley Center. On November 1st, the Penguins defeated the Golden Grizzlies for the first time since 2000. This victory also marked the team's first five-set win after trailing 2-0 on Roselli Court since 1998. Junior Abby Householder and fifth year Isabel Schaefbauer had double doubles. Householder had a match high 21 kills and 13 digs, while Schaefbauer recorded 44 assists and 19 digs. The Penguins won the third set 25 21, the fourth set 25 11, and the fifth set 15 13. In game two, the Penguins swept the Grizzlies in three straight sets. This was the Penguins' first sweep over Oakland since 1999. The set sores were 25 20. 25-19, and 25-15. After the games, Householder was named Horizon League Volleyball Player of the Week. Next, the Penguins traveled to Cleveland State University on November 8th and 9th. Live stats will be available on YSUSports.com. The Youngstown State Penguins hit the road but fell short in a hard-fought game against the Illinois State Redboards, losing 23-13. Reporter Joe Fuzo has more. Hello, this is Joel Fuso, reporter for the Jam Bar News. Head coach of the YSU Penguins, Doug Phillips, had emphasized the need for fewer mistakes after recent turnovers against North Dakota last game. Here's what he had to say. We got to clean up some of those mistakes. You know, we turned the ball over twice Saturday night. And to win a game when you turn the ball over twice, that's hard to do. The Penguins still face challenges offensively early on. Sophomore quarterback Bo Brungard completed 19 of 32 passes for 157 yards, including one touchdown and one interception. Youngstown State leaned heavily on their ground game, rushing 38 times for a team total of 142 yards. Senior Tyshawn King led the charge, picking up 59 yards on 12 carries with an average of 4.9 yards per carry. Junior linebacker DJ Harris led the defensive effort with 13 tackles and an interception while junior Jalen Castleberry added 10 tackles and a safety. The final quarter, Youngstown State's defense stepped up with a forced fumble, giving the offense one more shot. Brungard capitalized on the turnover, hitting junior Max Tomzak for a seven-yard touchdown, bringing the Penguins within seven points. The Penguins in the fourth quarter fell short of the comeback as the time ran out. After the game, Phillip said what he hoped to see in the future. The game. Just wish now that complimentary football day. We need to take advantage of those situations. Youngstown State continues their road stretch next week, facing Southern Illinois on November 9th at 1 p.m. The Penguins will be looking to shake off this loss and getting back in the win column next game. Now back to you in the studio. The Youngstown State University men's cross country team won its third straight Horizon League title on November 2nd at the 2024 Horizon League Cross Country Championships hosted by Green Bay. The third straight title by the men's marked the, te marked the team's longest streak in program history. Fifth year senior Hunter Christopher led the way for the Penguins with his second consecutive individual title in the men's 8K. Christopher became the first men's runner since 2009 to win back-to-back -back Horizon League titles. Both the men's and women's cross country teams will participate in the NCAA Great Lakes Regionals Championship on November 15th. Following the cancellation of the Youngstown State University women's basketball team's opening night matchup, the Penguins returned to the Beagley Center to face Lake Erie College. But that isn't all. Here's more on the story. Tip off for Monday's matchup was set to begin at 5.30 p.m., but the power outage inside the Beagley Center would force the Penguins to cancel their matchup against the University of North Dakota. Instead of making her debut in the beginning of the week, first-year head coach Melissa Jackson and her Lady Gwyns will look to return to the Beagley Center once again after a matchup against Lake Erie College. With the week one inconveniences, Coach Jackson expressed how she and her athletes are ready for the start of the season. Jackson said she is excited for the atmosphere that the Beagley Center possesses. They have been an unbelievable group to coach, so coachable. Um, have been really receptive to everything our coaching staff has thrown them. Um, but yes, there's tons of excitement around our program, uh, tons of excitement to be here in Beagley Center. Jackson also mentioned the significance of leadership on the team, especially with the addition of newcomers. Jackson said she loved seeing the returners showcase hospitality. 
Yeah, I think um, they've really done an unbelievable job of, of leading, you know, and really showing the way of, of what Youngstown State women's basketball is about and uh, really what Youngstown State University is about. Um, they welcomed all of our new newcomers with open arms. I thought all of our returners did a great job of that. Uh, but those in particular, you know, obviously they have some game experience, you know, which I think is really important to our team. And um, they've been able to show, you know, a lot of that in practice as well as our, our close scrimmages. And, um, you know, we rely on them a lot for, for their experience and their leadership. And um, I think they both of them have done a really good job of that. The Penguins will look to lean on veteran players such as graduate student guard Malia Magestro, who has been a main part of the Penguin hoops for years. Magestro said she knows she'll play the role of a leader for the 2024-25 season. Yeah, I'm super excited. You know, um, I was always one of the younger ones on the team because I had, you know, a lot of those those same teammates um, my past four or five years here. So, um, you know, now it's my turn to be the oldest on the team, and I'm really trying um, to just lead and help um, grow this uh, program in the right direction for Coach Jackson. I think she's really doing a lot of good things, and I'm, I'm really excited for this season. The women's basketball team will return home tomorrow when they host the Bonnies of St. Bonaventure. Tip-off for tomorrow's matchup is set for 6.30 p.m. The Penguins will remain home for the following week against Mercyhurst on Tuesday, November 19th. Tip-off for that game will be set for 11 a.m. To view live stats and stay updated, be sure to visit YSUsports.com. And as always, for the Jam Bar, I'm Taziah Howard. Ladies and gentlemen, the wait is over. And yes, that means the men's NCAA basketball season is officially underway. Sports editor Dylan Lux breaks down the offseason for Horizon League member Youngstown State. Dylan, what do you got? Desire, the YSU men's basketball team has had a huge overhaul this offseason, starting with the head coach position. Former Penguins head coach Jared Calhoun, who spent seven seasons with the Penguins, moved out to the Mountain West to become the new head coach of the Utah State men's basketball team. Former assistant coach and associate head coach Ethan Faulkner will lead the Gwins into the 24-25 season. Faulkner said he's excited about the opportunity to be YSU's head coach, but knows this season isn't just about him. It's super honored to, to be the head coach here and um, obviously excited about that opportunity. But, um, you know, obviously this season's not about me. It's about our guys and, and trying to maximize the potential of our team. As for new Penguins on the squad, YSU gathered nine recruits from the transfer portal and high schools. The class included three Division I transfers and two true freshmen. Penguins returned six athletes, including key members such as sophomore Gabe Dines and senior E.J. Farmer. Dines was named to Horizon League all-freshmen and all-defensive teams. Dines also led the Horizon League with 61 blocks, with 2.3 blocks per game in his first collegiate season. Being one of the veteran returners for YSU, Farmers said the team wanted to establish their culture with the new players right away. We've been talking about it since before the new guys even came. You know, the guys that was returning, we was basically saying how we got to start the culture right now, you know, from the spring workouts to now. With a Beagley Center power outage on November 4th, the men's basketball season opener against Westminster was postponed to a later date. At this time, the YSU men's basketball season is set to begin in Chicago, Illinois, on November 9th against Chicago State. Tip-off is set for 8 p.m., will be streamed live on NEC Front Row. And for Jambar TV, I'm Dylan Lux. Back to you, Tazai. Always a pleasure, Dylan. Be sure to stick around after the break for an interview with YSU's women's basketball player, Faith Birch. All right, so. Who knows why? I know why. For starters, I'm getting a top tier education without the price tag. Can you say that? Engineering, sports, music, business, I can do anything here. I'm getting my hands dirty learning what my friends are only reading about. I'm part of something bigger here. I'm proud to bleed red and black. So yeah, I know why. It's not a question, it's the answer. Youngstown State University, know why. We gon' push it to the limit, we gon' rise together Side by side to the finish, that will ride forever We gon' ride, we gon' ride together So together we ride, certified And together we ride, we gon' push it to the limit We gon' rise together, side by side to the finish That will ride forever, we gon' ride, we gon' ride together So together we ride, certified And together we ride, we gon' push it to the limit We gon' rise together, side by side to the finish Down the ride forever I 
I had the opportunity to sit down and chat with women's basketball player Faith Birch. Let's see what we had to talk about. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm joined here with Richard Jr., Faith Birch. Faith, how are we doing today? I'm doing great. It's game day, so it I'm pretty locked is. in. <laughs> I appreciate you for being here. Yeah. So week one, we know we obviously had the, the inconveniences of having the game canceled. So take us through how you're feeling about that and how you felt during the game. Woo, I was so salty because we was warming up and there was like 20 minutes left and we were in the locker room. Coach Jay was giving us a game talk and all we heard was zoom and then all the lights went off and she was like, surprise. Like, I'm like, no, this can't be happening. Right. And, and as reporters, you know, we're, we're trying to get the inside scoop of, you know, if the game's going to be delayed, if it's going to be postponed, if we're going to start shortly. And then, you know, you get the call or you get the, the update that it's canceled. So are you guys thinking that the game's going to be postponed? Are you thinking like, OK, we're just going to get started with a delay, at, you know, play at about 630? Um, honestly, at that time, we thought it was just a delay because of how Coach Jay was talking like, OK, they're trying to get stuff together and whatnot. So we were still optimistic. We were just trying to be patient. So after, after obviously, uh, the inconveniences of having the game canceled, uh, was there anything that Coach Jackson expressed, you know, going into the Friday matchup and, and, you know, getting back to practices during the week to not have your debut on the first of the week, but now at the end of the week? Um, not necessarily. It was more just stay focused, um, eye on the prize, and let's get a win. So obviously there's no surprises when it comes to you guys having that sort of inconvenience, you know, the week one outage and then obviously practicing in stand ball. So, how does it kind of feel like the shift between the off season and in season now that you're dealing with, you know, the week one cancellation and now you're going into week one, you know, at the end of the week? Um, honestly, I feel like as a team, like we're still very focused. We understand what we need to do in the season and we're just on to the next. So we're ready to play. And the word on the street is you, you had Coach Jackson as an assistant coach at Cleveland State. So how's the connection and chemistry feel for you as a player and, and, and really target that audience between her as a coach as well? Honestly, it was a full circle moment. Um, I'm very excited and thankful that she wanted me to be a part of the program when she came here. So I'm ready to play for her. So do you think there is a, a sense of urgency that she has, you know, going into her first year here and your first year here? Or is it kind of the same as if she had the same kind of attitude towards being at Cleveland State with the Vikings? Um, I feel like it's a little different because she has the head coaching job uh, at Cleveland State. She was more assistant coach, um, but I feel like she's been taking it on pretty calmly. She's been a head coach for years before Cleveland State, so she's she's hip to the game already. She's definitely earned her stripes, and it yeah. was it was an honor reporting about her. You're learning more about her, obviously, in her first year and making her debut, and you know, going through that that sort of you know bumpy road, and it's never going to be easy, especially right. for a D1 athlete. So. I, I wanted to ask you as a D1 athlete, how has that shift between different colleges kind of inspired you to be a better basketball player? Um, like, I feel like for me, it's more so like your grit. Like, how do you respond when adversity comes and what are you going to do on your next adventure for yourself? And I feel like I'm ready. I, I love to hear it. So basketball, I mean, obviously you have a lot of things that are being juggled with the basketball and the, and the school and the new school. So. Do you feel like basketball is kind of like a safe space? Or are you always locked in when it comes to basketball? Or do you have like other things around the, the hoop session that, you know, try and get you into the game and into class and into being the D1 athlete that you are? Um, I feel like being here, I've definitely been locked in and, I, and I've loved being a part of the program and being part of practices and whatnot. Um, if I need a little pick me up, I usually read on my, you know, uh, time off because I'm in grad school. I'm working on my master's, so that can be hard to juggle as well. But I've enjoyed it here. I've definitely said congratulations on the grad school. Thank I mean, you. obviously, you, you, you're, you earned your striped as well, as well as, you know, Coach Jackson. So is there anything that you want to give, like any advice that you want to give to the to younger athletes? I know you're a newcomer, but there are also newcomers that are, you know, on your team as freshmen and as yes. fellow transfers. So what do you say to your teammates that are coming into a new environment as well as you? Um, my one thing that I always say to my freshmen that I love is to always believe in yourself and to understand that it's a process and you have to give yourself grace and time to absorb all the things that you're learning because it's new. So one word you, you would use to describe this season, uh, you know, first, first, for, first word that comes to your mind to describe this season, what would it be and why? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I would say toughness I guess um, we were the preseason we were number five I feel like that's really good for us since we're a whole new team um, but I feel like with whole new staff new people coming into the program like we need to have mental and physical toughness to really grind out this first season and make make a statement 
And I think I can speak for the entire YSU family when I said we're going to be here cheering in Beagley Center for each and every single game. Yes. We want to appreciate Faith Birch for being here. Thank you, and thank you for your time. Yes. Let's send it back to the studio. That's all we have for the Jambar Sports Extra this week. But stick around. Next week, we'll be back.